Great day, fam. Welcome to the Community Nonprofit Network Podcast, a.k.a. the CNN Podcast. My name is Erica Scott, and I am the Executive Director and Founder of Life Changers, Inc. And with me today is a special guest, an old friend of mine from way back in the day, Michael Sace Halpern, a true Yorker and founder of NYC Bridge Runners. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Mike Sace, how are you? First of all, I'm not that old. He said I'm an old friend. <laughs> you old. Are, well, hey, these days, if you know somebody more than five days, they're an old friend, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm still only 51 years young, and uh, we go back to uh, Red and Black Lumberjacks. With the hats and match. Guess what? We go back to the book. So we go yeah, back we go back to, to breaking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> popping, pop locking, breaking, and 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 all the above, all the the true Yorker stuff. Um, I guess we're lucky to be around at that at that time and see all the change. We, yes. we were around before Beaver. When, yeah, when Beaver yeah. became a thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, uh, Latin Quarter, Rooftop, Union Square. Yeah, yeah, let's go there. Yes, yes. <laughs> but but we, no. we survived that. We, we're alive still. So that's yes, yes. Thing. Oh, wow. Yeah, we oof, we won't go there. We won't go. We definitely are not going there. But we are here today because we had a brief conversation. I told you, hold on, hold on, because I got to get you on air to talk about all this awesomeness that you're cooking up in back, you know, because I'm in it, well, in Atlanta since the early 90s. and um, But you're still there in New York doing all this good stuff, and I've got to hear about it, and I want our listeners to hear about it right along with me. So now, start from, please, just to fill, I know your back, I know your backstory, but please just fill our listeners in with where you start, why do we call you SACE, and then kind of quickly go up to, the topic today, please. Cool. All right. Well, um, I'm I'm a true Yorker. I was born on the Lower in 1970, so I grew up on the East Side, and then I went to school on the West Side, um, and that's where we started hanging out in Horatio Street Park and going to I-70 and the Roxy's and all all those things downtown. <laughs> so I was. Uh, Born on the Lower in 1970, um, and uh, so grew up on the East Side, St. Mark's Movie Theater, Tompkins Square Park, Bread and Puppet, all the cool little downtown kind of hippie <laughs> East Village things. Uh, and then I went to the West Side to PS3 and moved over to Jane Street next to the Corner Bistro and got cool hanging out in Horatio Park, Valley Park. Um, and that's, you know, early 80s when graffiti and then and, uh, and popping and carrying around big boom boxes kind of was the thing <laughs> going down. So luckily I was part of that as, as a youth, but uh, kind of became a local community organizer just because where I was located on Horatio Street and we used to walk from there to Washington Square Park. And uh, and kind of walk around everywhere, all all of Manhattan, and exploring. So, because of like my connections with graffiti and people, um, started going out to the clubs. You know, a little bit of dancing, not professionally, but just you know, kind of uh, that's what we did back in the days. We danced, and um, and I kind of uh, you know, got connected with a lot of a lot of you know, true Yorkers, other true Yorkers. And uh, in 2001, I started a project called the New York City Urban Experience down at the seaport. It was kind of graffiti related and art related. And then in 2003, I started uh, the bridge, the NYC Bridge Runners, which is a, the first kind of, uh, the first run crew. And, um, we, we launched the Urban Running Movement, which is now uh, from Seoul to Soweto, and that's called Bridge the Gap. 
So what I did in uh, 2003, I started running the bridges, the Manhattan to the Brooklyn or the Williamsburg to the Manhattan or all three. I used to run it like midnight, um, hot summer. So it ran late at night and uh, some cool people saw me and decided to follow me. And I met a, a, a friend of mine, Dan Cherry, who was working at Wyden and Kennedy at the time. And he was like, hey, this is something cool. Maybe Nike would want to get involved. And I was already a Nike head. Um, <laughs> so, so I partnered with Nike in 2004, 2005. Uh, well, in 2004, 2005, we started doing like culture runs where I would take people to a, an old neighborhood and explain how it used to be, how it used to smell, who was hanging out there. And I would get a guest speaker that would give the history of that neighborhood. So we did the Bronx by Yankee Stadium, and I had nice and smooth talk about what the hood was wow. like. We did uh, Patsy's Pizza in the El Barrio, and I had Fable from Rocksteady Crew talk about Spanish Harlem. Uh, we did the South Street Seaport before it moved to Hunts Point. Had a you know, third-generation fishmonger speak about what that was like. So, um, you know, like good history lessons about New York. And so when I run now, I've been running every Wednesday for 19 years. Um, wow. And it's always an experience. It's, it's really about you learning about the city that you live in, whether you were born and raised here or, or you know, whether you just got off a boat or a plane. We try <laughs> to use the bridges to connect, you know, the culture or the cultures and, and the runners and and uh yeah it, it ended up being a, a global movement called bridge the gap um in 2012 about uh 10 crews uh met in berlin um and got together to run a berlin half marathon but it was from from switzerland and paris and amsterdam and hong kong uh, new york um all around the world copenhagen um Wow. And we all met in Berlin, and that was the first uh, bridge to gap, um, which was bringing the runners from different places together, uh, and that created this thing we call Crew Love, which is kind of this crazy energy that we get, you know, when we meet up. So um, that was uh, my my counterpart in London, Charlie Dark from Run Dem Crew. And uh, one of my, one of the cool people that started following me over the bridges, Jess Zappo, and they kind of organized this trip to um, Berlin with some other crews. And and now it's, uh, you know, post-COVID, we're back. We just, we're just in Toronto together, a few hundred people. Uh, a bunch of people came to New York for the marathon. And, um, you know, we were out in Berlin. And really what it is is about, like, you know, the running world was kind of elitist um, in many ways. And one way, you know, to run a marathon or a triathlon costs a lot of money, which it shouldn't. Um, right. But you, know, you have to raise money for this foundation and you have to do these races and kind of, which isn't really cool, uh, kind of pisses me off. So I want to change that. And um, it's also elitist because, you know, it's just kind of this, the running world was was never really cool. It was just jogging um, or speed, right? right? And you know, we're like speed is cool if you have it flaunted, <laughs> but that's not what we're about. We're about you know the journey, and so you know we we change the game, and 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 it's not about the fastest, um, and it's it's really about running your city and, and teaching people like, hey, this is where you should go eat or this is where you should go drink or this is where you should go party and kind of these like guided tours of our city. And if you're part of the BTG movement, Bridge the Gap, then anybody from New York could go to Soweto or, or to, you know, Belgrade or Berlin or any of these places and they'll have family there just by mentioning they're down with the bridge runners that will show them where to eat, where to party, wow. where what 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 art shows to see. It's kind of like this this network of cool people that happen to run. Um, so I'm really proud of that. 
And I think the reason why it's, you know, it started here, as many things do. Um, <laughs> I think it's my my true Yorker uh, background that makes me want to show off New York and learn about New York. Right. And a friend of mine a few years ago, my boy John Law, who who started a crew or helped launch a crew in Hong Kong, and he called me for advice on, like, how to do it. Because run clubs have been around forever. Running at night has been around forever. Running to drink has been around forever. We just kind of changed it to a run crew, and it was, like, non-running runners, and it was, you know, really about exploring and, and experiencing. But he he mentioned to me the reason why he thinks – our runs are cooler. Like we don't run through Central Park or any of that stuff. We just we run the bridges and under the bridges and you know what, whatever. You know, we we smell food, we make a left. We <laughs> see graffiti, we make a right. You know, we, we kind of use the city as 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 the guide. But he had mentioned to me that he believed the reason why our runs were cool is because I was a graffiti guy and I see the the city like differently like I, I look up right. I look across I don't you know I'm not looking down at my feet I'm always looking what's around me and I think the trick to running at least distance because I run ultras really I'm an ultra runner so that means I run 50 k's or better um a marathon wow. is 26.2 miles a 50 k is 31 miles I've run 50 miles before I run 100 miles once probably do it again soon um but I run, I run distance and it's not about speed. You know, it's about, you know, the mission and eating and a little food towards that kind of thing. But, right. but because I grew up seeing the city as a, as an artist, I, I present the city that same way, which is interesting. You know, it's not when you come running with me on a Wednesday, which I hope all of your listeners do when they come to New York, um, they'll experience the city in a different way. Uh, than ever before and what's cool is it's it's not only me I you know I have a co-captain Cedric and I have other coaches and and everybody who runs with us with the bridge runners uh, has the obligation to show somebody something new something different that is awesome but I I have to stop you right there I have never known you to run (laughs) so tell me when did you take up the, you said 19 years ago. So that explains it because I've been gone for longer than that. But what made you as an adult want to pick up running? Because it's not like you have a, a weight. You know, a lot of people start running because they want to work out and, and lose weight. You've never had a weight issue. So what made well, you? Well, I, I, I actually did have a weight issue. You, you went around, but in the late nineties when I became a baller, I was eating a lot of really good food at three in the morning and I was 198 <laughs> pounds and I was pretty big. You were uh, how much? 198. I mean, you knew me. I was 155. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Me, Rocco days. Yes. So I went up to 198 cause I was making too much money, drinking too much Cristal and eating fancy <laughs> food at four in the morning. And my sister, uh, Elizabeth, Got me a uh, colonic for my birthday. <laughs> uh, that is so Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah, so she was out in Cali. She's on the health kick. So did the colonic, and then I started doing this thing called the Master Cleanse, which was this uh, lemonade, cayenne pepper, um, salt, uh, water kind of fast. And I lost some weight with that. And then I went to a gym, Chelsea Piers. And uh, I hooked up with this coach. This is like late 90s. And he was like, look, there's my boy, uh, Ed Lovelace. And he was like, why don't we train on the FDR drive, you know, instead of in the, in the, in the gym. And, you know, so that was in the late 90s. And I started running on the track. Um, and uh, I guess that was my intro to running. He disappeared for a couple of years. Uh, I continued fasting. but uh, And I was running a little bit. I was running. I was, you know, I'm a, I'm an ex track star from, you know, the train tracks. So okay. I was always, you know, the first, my first run was getting chased by a cop in, in Horatio <laughs> Cruz Park when I was 11. I, I wasn't going to mention it. <laughs> so I, I was with, I was with Clinton, with Clint 
Duncan and I got chased in the park 1983 or 82 doing graffiti. Mm -hmm. And I and I stopped running from the cops and I said to myself, like, I could have outrun him. You know, I need to keep running. So that's my first experience running. Uh, and uh, and it was really just, you know, running from street. Right. Like that was, you know, so uh, and then I would get new sneakers and I'm like, hey, you never know. Let me run six blocks in these sneakers just in case. I get chased or whatever, right? So, right, right. And then I guess in the early 2000s, because I was a sneakerhead, I was getting all these these running shoes, and I was like, you know, if I played basketball and wore these shoes, I'd, I'd be balling in them. So, if I'm wearing these running shoes, maybe I should start running. And I started running the bridges in 2003. So I had already been running a couple of years before. You know, I lived in. Um, Shaolin for a couple of years and I used to run from the ferry to to my crib which was right on on, on Bay Street by uh White Castle so I'd run like a mile at four in the morning and my Timberlands leaving red zone in 1992 and uh so I did that kind of running and it's kind of like I don't know it's you know running is running is the sh because um and actually, Will Smith said this. I don't normally quote Will Smith, but I, I do with this one. He said the two most important things are running and reading. Um, and reading is obvious, but running, uh, there will always be a voice in your head telling you to stop. And if you could beat that voice in your head, then you could beat anything. So wow. you know, while while running, especially when I was running by myself, I used to be like, I could stop right now and nobody would know. I could walk, I could do this, I could do that, but like, why? So that kind of voice in your head pushes you further. Right. And especially when you're somebody who's like, I'll never run a marathon. Um, and then you do. So it's really, running is really therapeutic. And that's kind of how I, I'm looking at the future of running is about therapy, it's not about speed. Because speed is like oh, steroids or, you know, training for like all this stuff. And it really shouldn't be about that. It should be about I'm going to lace up. I'm going to connect with some friends. I'm going to learn about New York and I'm going to do it again next week or this weekend or whatever. And, and kind of the, this is my new crew. These are my people. And, you know, or especially if you just moved to New York, here's this kind of like front seas on how to become like a New Yorker. Uh, not a true Yorker, but a New Yorker. A true Yorker <laughs> kind of takes more than running the bridges to become a true Yorker. But right, you right. Know, just a way to learn about your city in in a quick way. So it's kind of like we offer this this New York tour, but we really it's really a social thing. It's really about connecting with with, with cool people and learning. So. Um, yeah, we, we changed what running is or was. We made it more colorful, um, with a lot of people of color and a lot of Asians and Europeans. Like when we run like the, 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 the American, uh, white female is the minority. And that's generally normally what, what the running world looks like. Like people that ran in college or high school are people, you know, we have a couple of ex athletes, but it's really about people that that never ran before, you know what I mean? Or, you know, that's awesome. it's, it's, yeah, it's really about changing. Like I don't, I don't need to be a part of something that already exists. You know, I'm about like changing and making running cool. And again, really about making it a therapy because I think like, I don't run with music, you know, I get my mind right. And, you know, maybe I'll talk with some people and push some people to go faster or further, finish strong, certain rules we have with running we have our crew commandments and it's you know run your city never run alone smile for the camera finish strong <laughs> fast and first 50 second those kind of things we try to look cool and okay then so i'm always kind of cool fashion times function that kind of thing but uh, i think overall you know what 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 the bridge runners have done and what bridge the gap has done is made running more accessible and cooler and and really open up the doors for a lot of other people to be connected globally, which I don't, you know, when I bridge the gap is a movement right. and 
I'd say it's called BTG, which I say is bigger than grunge because <laughs> our move, like my daughter runs with me. Right. And, and my daughter has friends that are like, Hey, I'm, I'm going to Harvard and in, in Boston. Do you have any run crews in Boston? Which I have awesome. Several, awesome. You know? So it's kind of like wherever you go in the world, most likely there will be a crew that's connected to us. And they're going to let you know where to get ramen or empanadas or, or you know, or, and they'll throw a party for you. Like when we, you know, so it's really, it's a cool new thing. And I'm, I'm super stoked to be a part of. And that's, that's Bridge the Gap. You know, that's, that's, that's our movement. Well, I, I'll say this. I mean, it, it's awesome. And like I told you on the phone, I know, even though I know you're not in a formal nonprofit, but what do nonprofits do? We serve a need, right? We serve a need in the community. And you're serving needs. You don't have to be a nonprofit, a 501c3 or whatever, to serve this need all over the world, not just in a community, but community by community, by state, by country, you know, by continent. So my, I know you've been around for a while, a long time now. We're going to get into that in two seconds. But – um, I want to just say how awesome this is to me that it, it, it's per, I, I think it's perfect timing at any time of, you know, the millennial, you know, the decade, whatever. But right now, post pandemic, like you said, now post pandemic, this is like really what I mean, have you seen what some people are doing on TV while they're locked down, you know, during the pandemic and these dolls? We're not going there. But this here is a great way, I think, to get out, um, not be in a in indoors in a cluster, you know, uh, so we can kind of, you know, just in case people are sick, you know, we're not breathing and coughing all over everybody in, in enclosed, you know, facilities. But I think it is a way for, you know, pandemic has done what? It has spawned like so many new things. This is to a lot of people who've never heard. I never heard of it. This is a new thing. And um, I th- I think it's just going to flourish from here. So now, with that being said, uh, I want you to talk about the big gatherings uh, that you had for a fifteen right fifteen year anniversary, and the one the big one coming up. Right. Well, one thing I, I I'd say about what's really cool about the Bridge Runners, um, you know, being the first crew, and now it's really about us bridging runners, um is what we kind of train leaders. Uh, So people that go through our camp do, do, do big things and kind of the, the mantra now of the crew, it's like a few years ago, we're like, look, it's not just about having a cool t-shirt and and running at night. And when we, we, we made it a rule that you have to connect with the nonprofit, you have to connect with the cause, you have to, you know, support things and bring awareness. So whether it's, you know, sickle cell awareness from, from Amsterdam with the pilot run crew, or there's a uh, you know, mental, mental health in yes. London and working with younger, uh, the youngers in, in London, in London as well. Just, you know, and us, we, we have, a I have a, a nonprofit I've been working on or with, without the status called I can do better, which is getting kids out there to do better. And, and there's, and, you know, the, every, every crew, has a give back. So that's awesome. really cool. Like training the lady. We just, the thing is, is because I've been doing it for 19 years, you know, I need to, we need to get younger and cooler. So I, right. I would say a lot of the protests and stuff like that, that was happening in, in New York, uh, the George Floyd stuff and all that. We, we, we were working with young, some of the younger people, our, our biggest activist power Malu, who's, who's part of, of the movement. Uh, he's at the Port Authority every day for the last few weeks, welcoming in the uh, immigrants that are sent here on buses. Oh, and, wow! Awesome, so, awesome. So, so we're we're very tapped into um, to what's going on, which is cool. You know, it's not just about like, oh, I'm fast, I'm cool, or I got a, a Nike shirt and you know these cool sneakers and this and that. It's, right, it's not right. That. Was that in the beginning, but now like it's 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 a lot more, which is which is cool because you don't. You know, I knew that there was bridges everywhere, and I knew that the bridges connected things and people, but to have it turn out to be this kind of thing that's that's bigger than all of us is is very cool. Um, 
in 2018, we had our like 15 year anniversary in New York. I had the dates wrong of when we started, which is funny. And I looked at a graffiti picture and I was like, wait a second, that says 2004 in the picture. That means we were running in 2003. I'm like, oh, <laughs> God, you're we didn't start in four. We didn't start See, in five. So. You're not representing the 50 plus club right now so, too well. <laughs> so we, we got the dates right. Uh, and uh, we did a big, we, we had a bunch of people come to New York from all around the world. Um, we did our history thing. We did like seven days in New York. So like we went to Yankee Stadium. We went to City Field. We took the Staten Island Ferry. Uh, you know, um, just something in every borough every day and just try to really show what, what New York is about. Um, and now five years later, uh, 2023, we will be doing our... Um, our big one, you know, 20 years of crew culture. Wow. Helped launch, right? Crazy two decades. Of, of... We, yeah, that's a long time to do anything. <laughs> People don't work a job that long, let alone, and we'll get to that in a minute, but, you know, let alone just, a, you know, a social event like this, because that's basically what it boils down to, a, a social event turned community event turned give back event turned, you know, and, and be healthy while you're doing it all. Hey, go for it. So talk to us about what's going on. Uh, what What's the uh, plan for the big festivity? Um, well, depends on when we do it. The problem is, like, you know, I want to do this 100-mile run, but you can't do that in the summer. It's too hot. Mm. Um, so we might do something in the spring. But it's also uh, a, another run crew called We Run Uptown, which is from the Heights, Washington Heights. And... Um, it's their 10 year anniversary coming up this year too. So I kind of want to, if I'm going to invite people to, from all around the world to come to New York, I kind of want to do both things at the same time and their anniversaries in the summer. So okay. one of the, one of the runs we're going to do is we, we have what's called a BRHQ, which is our headquarters, bridge runner headquarters. And we've had probably about 20 of them in the last 20 years. And we're going to do one run where we stop at each one of those HQs and whoever did their first run will speak up and give their, their story about their first run. Cause it's always an adventure. Like your first run with us is always something crazy, you know, Oh, you <laughs> run five miles and we ran eight miles and we did that. It's, it's always great to hear. So that'll be one of the events. And, you know, we try to, when we do, um, uh, bridge the gap we'll do like some speed events maybe some relay races we'll do like an ultra like a 50k so i'm sure i'll do like a 50k the 100 miler i'll I'll try and you know i gotta start training for it myself but um, <laughs> we'll probably do that when it's still a little colder uh because it's not you know it's, it's hard to run 100 miles in the heat so um but but it's really about bringing people down and and uh and really like you know because you know, as the running world is elitist in a way, really because of, you know, finances and kind of just running wasn't cool. And so we came around, um, we've been kind of the same way, like, oh, you know, those guys are run nerds and we don't want to run like them or run with them or like we do our own thing. And, and I feel like now after 20 years of, of, of doing it, we should provide the world with the, with the kind of plan. Like it's not about just the cool people anymore, you know, you could be right. cooler if you're teaching about like we're kind of giving this kind of I call it a crew starter kit, and it's basically a way that you could start your own crew, give you the foundation, give you the reasons, give you a uniform. Um, I want to work with all of the of, of the the running brands, not just Nike, but it'd be. Well, good. I'm glad you're going into that because I was going to ask how does somebody get started like kind of like a franchise under you right. know. yeah well that's kind of our, our plan for the, the 20 years so it's it's you know two decades of crew culture and we want to provide a crew starter kit which means like you and four or five friends get together one day a week and and you know find a bridge or find a bar or something like for so like part of one of the crew commandments is run your city which actually came out of hong kong and it's really about like this is your city, then show us, like prove it, right? And so, uh, uh, one <laughs> crews, 
uh, called the 504th, which is out of New Orleans. Um, you know, they, people, people come to us for guidance and like, you know, how, like, you know, how to do it right since we've probably made most of the mistakes already in our 19 year history. So we try to help people and um, provide the blueprint for crews. And what I told the guys in, in New Orleans, even though there's probably bridges there, et cetera, I was like, you have so much rich culture out there then. I suggested that every week they meet somewhere else at a bar, a lot of drinking culture out there, <laughs> and, um, and promote those bars, promote those awesome. uh, establishments, you know, that like, you know, when I, when I went out there last, which was right before COVID, um, we did a 50 K out there, uh, 31 mile run. Um, you know, we went to, we met at a bar and they were like, okay, you know, there's going to be jazz here later on tonight, you know, come back at like 10 o'clock kind of thing and 11 o'clock. So it's, it's really like that culture is teaching people like, okay, this is, here's the spots, make sure, you know, you don't overlook this and you don't, you know, so. Right, right. That's for that specific city, right? So for us, we, we keep it close to the bridges, um, you know, so we can, you know, that's our elevation. Those are our hills. That's our, that's our park. That's our, you know, that's our space. Um, but in other cities, it's, it, it might not be. So it's really about like, what does your city have to offer? What do you want to show off about your city? What, you know, what, what, what story can your city tell? It's never about Mike says, you know, with his this or that. It's really about New York and, you know, look at, you know, this park under this bridge and look at this alley and not you know, just the touristy stuff, not just the empire the, state building, the, right? Never. Not just Macy's the seller. <laughs> not, never, never any of that to tell you. <laughs> I think that like a couple of years ago, we ran up to Rockefeller tree to see that, or, you know, like maybe we'll do something like that, but it's, it's really about like the best kept secrets. Right. And, right. And, and and it's always about the, the the roads less traveled. Like it's it's under the umbrella of what I call roots and culture, routes and culture, R U T E S. And it's really about like let's learn, you know, or teach. Which yeah. I'm really proud of mostly is because, you know, being a New Yorker, you, you think you know a lot, and then you learn these new things. It's very very cool, you know. Like for example, like I was running. We did this run the other day where four of us are 51 years old, so we have the 51 club, and next year will be the 52 ooh, club. Ooh, hey, repping. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, so we ran, and it's funny because uh, uh, Af, Africa from the Jungle Brothers, uh, just started running with us, and uh, but I didn't, wow. know was, uh, I didn't know he's down with the 51 club. He could have he could have joined us for this run, but it was four of us. We, we did it last year. It was the, the 50 club. Um and uh, and we were running up First Avenue with my boy Barr, OG, true Yorker. And he's like, oh, that's the original Jimbo's. And I'm like, you know, and the Jimbo's we know from, you know, 145th Street and chain all this. And he points that out to me on, on you know, 50, like, 6th or 7th and 1st Avenue. Like, yeah, that's been there since, you know, the 50s or 60s, something like. And I'm like, I never noticed this. I run up the street. I bike up the street. You know, you could see by the sign that it's been there forever. Right. And so I'm like, oh, wow. And then, you know, we go down 52nd Street and we find a park with a waterfall. And I'm like, oh, like, so it's really about like, wow, like this is, you know, because the trick to running is to not know that you're running. Right. Right. Like you're on the treadmill <laughs> and you're looking at the time and you're looking at the distance. Yes. Even with a TV <laughs> on, it doesn't always work. <laughs> But when you're like running through neighborhoods and seeing people watching and, you know, and, and, and vibing, it's totally different. And then you're like, right. you know, I've said like, you know, a lot of people run in the morning to get it over with. We run at night and we never want it to end. Oh, because wow. we know who's going to show up? Like somebody from, from, you know, Copenhagen or Amsterdam or from wherever, like it's, somebody's bound to, you know, show up with, with the passport to come run with us. And there's always new people. And, and then it's first time in a long time. We have this revolving door where, you know, you could 
might not see you for a couple of years and you pop back up and it's family. So awesome. Awesome. It's really cool. And I'm, I'm hoping to pass it down to, to the children and, and have them keep going. And I really feel like, again, bigger than grunge, which was a trend. Very cool. But it ain't about plaid no more. Like us, right. it's really about like culture, roots and culture. It's really about, you know, exploring and, you know, now we're doing trail running to get the fresh air and, and just different kind of experiences. A lot of people are doing ultras. People just ran 50 miles last week, you know, like it's, you know, we're wow. real, we're, we're real runners, but we're real cool at the same time. So it's, it's kind of different, you know, it's really, it's really like a network of the most talented, creative people on the planet that lace up and you know give tours of of their city so it's not, it's kind of like my it's my thing now i mean i have several other things that i'm working on um but that's my wednesday thing and it's really like when i look at the friends that i have now like on the regular they're really from running like i have all my old graffiti friends and uh you know my pothead friends and <laughs> all, all all the ogs but like you know, now it's it's kind of like these new, these these new friends, new family, and it's, it's healthy very, friends, new healthy friends. There you go. Exactly. Exactly. Well, on one hand, we say you know we're we're a drinking club with a running problem, um, <laughs> but you know we all have our 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 our, our things. But it That's does too funny. Yeah, like I do, I, I'm I'm doing the sea moss thing and the alkaline water, and I do the intermittent fast thing, and and I try to like make all those things part of my lifestyle and and get other people healthier, you know. Um, so I have like you know, I call it ATA, all the above strategy on things, but I I feel like you know fitness and 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 especially with the mental. Um, it shouldn't be that difficult and it shouldn't be that expensive. And I'm just trying to make those kind of things easier and, and joyful. Like it shouldn't be like, Oh man, I got to go to the gym. This sucks. It should be like, right, oh, right, run. right. Are we, and who are we hanging out with afterwards? Like, what are we going to learn? So it's kind of like changing. And it's really when it, when it comes to the youth and how I want to make running therapeutic, it's really about like running has always been a punishment. You know, give me 10 laps. Do this, right. do that. <laughs> really, it yeah be a joy because it is it is a social thing and it is and, it, and you know even though you're with you know i could run with 100 people it's my legs that are moving you know what i mean so right even though it's a group activity um you got to carry yeah. your own weight exactly exactly yeah, so that's, that's cool great. and then at a certain point you become selfless and to me, it's not like I, you know, I don't remember the last time I did a New York City marathon. I do the harder thing, which is cheering for seven, eight hours for a marathon. <laughs> Steam off when they're at mile 21 or some water, or, you know, running with them and just trying to, you know, finish strong and kind of like, you know, because running is at least 90 percent mental. Um, right. So like being there to support our runners, our first timers is really more of, of what I do than and getting my, you know, sub 3:30 marathon. It's more important for me to to get uh to get people out there and kind of and I feel like they know the importance of spreading crew love. Like everybody knows. It's like once you okay, I did my marathon or you know, I got people that are doing sub 3 marathons and people in Copenhagen doing 230 marathons, but even they know that it's really about the community more than this special feat that you know they train for it's really about the the the, the culture and the, the new culture of running and um and bringing people together you know so yes that's 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 my thing you just mentioned sub three what, what is that uh, a sub three marathon is like elite so that's like doing a marathon in under three hours so that's like you know, it's possible. It's a lot of training. People do it. Like the the big marathon thing was somebody just did a sub two marathon, breaking two it was called. So for regular runners, uh breaking three is a super big deal. Um elite runners will do like a two forty or a two thirty four. I 
you know, generally ran 354 sub four marathons, which is kind of, you know, that's a goal for, you know, somebody that started running if they're like, okay, I'm going to do my first marathon. I'm going to try and do sub four. Most people, their first marathons, they just want to finish, right? Get me to the finish line. Right, right. But if you train, you want to do sub four. If you train hard, you want to do, you know, a, a 330. And if you're fastest, you want to do sub three, um, which is which is next level. Okay, so that does go into the speed that you were saying we're not about speed. Well, the thing is, if you have it flaunted, right? So if not, <laughs> you know, if it. If you can finish your marathon in three hours, that gives you time to go back out to the to the cheer squad and cheer the five hour marathoners on because <laughs> they're helping. You know, it's, yeah. You know, I think yeah. I think speed inspires people, but you know, my 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 co captain Cedric was like, you know, don't become a run nerd. You know, don't don't make it about speed. You're running too fast. You know, like, and I'm like, look, I want to I want to challenge everybody. If you come to run, I want to make i want to make sure everybody's sweating you know what i mean right but right fast people in the back get lost and then people are scared to run with us because we're running seven minute miles and most people run nine minute miles so it, it's it's hard to balance the the speed and the um the speed and in you know the the group uh but we try to like i want to start doing you know Three mile runs. I generally run six miles every Wednesday, um, but we want to do shorter distance, like two miles, three miles, just to get people started and get people into it. So, you know, I'm trying to, I I do, uh, you know, speaking to other captains, we know that we have to adjust and we have to make it running younger and cooler. And how do we do that? And part of that is saying, hey, you're only running two, three miles. It's going to take you 20, 30 minutes. It's not your whole night it's something you could do and finish right, with the beer right. day or so just trying to make running more accessible to to non-running runners which has always been the goal i just okay. like when i was doing the intermittent fasting and the cmos i got a lot faster and people got mad at me because now i'm like oh what are you going to start wearing a heart monitor and a watch which i don't <laughs> I just, it, you got I an app on your phone <laughs> So they 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 threaten they call me a run nerd. I am not, but um. Oh come on now! Nineteen years doing this. I mean, you don't just run for you know healthy reasons. You run. You've made a whole movement about running. So I, I, maybe just a little bit of nerding. Maybe just a little bit. <laughs> so what's what's next after the big twenty? The big tw- wow. Props. After the Big 20, what's next for the movement? I mean, yeah, you're already I mean, worldwide, so now where where do you go from here? Global. We call it All Planet. Um, I think really it's about doing our own races, um, or sometimes I call them par races. Or it's like part parade, part race. And, um, you know, I want to create our own events. I do these, these 50K jump-ins, which – you know, you don't have to start from the beginning and you don't have to finish at the end. So, like, say you want to run 10 miles, you can meet us in the middle, run 10 miles and leave. Jump in, jump out. And I want to, because what happens is towards the end, maybe you only can run one mile. You're going to finish with everybody and the collective energy of the group getting bigger and stronger is 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 the magic. Whereas if, you know, you're running 100 miles, you know, maybe only 10 people are going to finish. But if you include in that 100 miles, you know, a 20-mile option, a 10-mile option, a 5-mile option, and they join you and and push you and inspire you and help you, then I think that's that's the future. And I don't like to wake up at 5 a.m. to show up to a run and wait two hours to start running. Mm. Like, I, I prefer my runs at the sunset with the sunset, not the sunrise. Uh, okay. And finish the run, you dance, shake out the lactic acid, you party, and you go to sleep. A lot of these runs, when they start at 6, 7, 8, 9 a.m., you finish at noon, you don't know what to do, you're kind of stuck. Like, I would go to the bathhouse, go in the cold pool, you know, get my legs right. But not everybody has access to the Russian-Turkish bathhouse on 10th Street. Like <laughs> so, 
they're like, oh, what am I doing? You know, and I'm like, you know, if we run it in the evening and, and run with the sunset, then you, you know what you're going to do. You're going to dance, you're going to chill, and then you're going to go to sleep. So I'm just trying to change the game that way where I feel like, you know, you have these races with 40,000 people in it. You know, we could have a 1,000 people in our race or 10,000 people in our race, and it'll be cooler and, you know, promoting cities and promoting businesses and, and runways. So it's really about, like, how do we, like, the same way it's called non-traditional running. So, like, the Tough mutters and the Spartan races and all those crazy things where people run through mud and, you know, under fire and all that stuff. That kind of vibe, but I don't want to get my Nikes muddy, right? I know so, you don't. No, no. <laughs> so there's but, another way to do it. <laughs> there's a, so it's, it's non-traditional running where, like, you know, we have music and we are, you know, I had Slick Rick perform at the end of one of uh, oh, wow. our race. And, you know, like a marathon party, we have the Jungle Brothers perform. I've had Greg Nice perform. And it's, it's really about this celebration of accomplishment. I always feel like the best party is celebrating accomplishment. So when I had, I had the Urban Experience Museum in 2001, 2002 at the South Street Seaport, I've had this kind of art thing going on. And I remember like, the party for the opening was the best because you had 30 artists that are all there celebrating their work together. And it's like, look what I did kind of, you know, and, um, and that feeling, that energy, that collective energy is, is the real magic. So, um, you get that same energy from, from running marathons with the, with the group, like this kind of like, Hey, we did it. We made it, you know, we survived, you know, like, right. Right. And we'll do it again. Like, that's also like, I know, like, I remember when Diddy did the marathon and he didn't do it again. I was like, oh, he did it wrong because if you do it right, you, you're going to keep running. And right. you're going to run because it is it is like not a – it's just a pair of sneakers and some ice cubes or some, some turmeric or whatever you need. But it's not this whole like, you know, $1,000 gym membership or – No, you know, no. That made up an hour trainer or all that stuff. It's like – you lace up, you come out, you go as far as you can, you know, you take your time, you come back next week, you get better. So it's really just kind of like affordable. Like lifestyle. Food. Yeah, it's complete lifestyle. That's the, that's really what's cool about the, the movement as this has become our lifestyle. People have gotten married. People have had children. People plan. Oh, wow. <laughs> I wasn't going there with the lifestyle, but the, okay, that's awesome. Oh, complete. Like people choose their vacation, where they will travel in the world according to a run crew. You know, what? And they, like, I want to go to Bali. Okay, here's the run crews in Bali. You know, I want to go to Russia or wow. not there, like, But wherever you go, um, there will be somebody, you know, waiting for you to show you that. And I think people like, you know, everybody's going to Tokyo in 14 weeks. So be a bunch of people from all around the world out there for the Tokyo marathon. So that's, what's really cool. We actually have people meeting in Hawaii on December 10th. I wish I could go bridge the gap, Honolulu. So there's, you know, everywhere. And, and look, there might be, you know, 20 people, 30 people and not the 300 or not the 3000 that we want. But as long as people from different places are getting together to run together, um, then that's really what bridge the gap is, and that's like I think will go on forever, and and it's and it's, that's why. Now, do, do you have? Um, and I, and I know we're running short on time, but I want to I want to know one thing real quick, two things. Um, for one, do you have someone who, like who are you recording this stuff? Or are you live or? Uh, I yeah. mean, yeah, well, it's mostly on Instagram, so at Bridge Runners, but. There's other run crews that all have. It's it's funny because if you if you add all of the the bigger run crews, we're all probably around you know between twenty five and thirty thousand followers between the you know main four or five groups. Mind you, there's dozens and dozens of crews. Most of them are like six thousand followers, five thousand, something like that. But if you just look at say the top four being like London, Copenhagen, you know New York, and I don't know, Amsterdam, whatever. Um, only 500 people from the bridge runners follow Rundem crew in London. 
And so that's really, that makes it 50,000 runners, you know, because wow. we don't all follow. And then you add Copenhagen, which is like 27,000 followers, still only 450 of us follow them, you know, and you just, so it's really, you know, the whole movement, you know, is over 100,000 runners. You wow. Know? So uh, that's really awesome. about trying to figure out how to connect all of, all of these runners in a, in a, in a better way, which is most likely web three kind of putting people together, doing, you know, squad casts and different talks, especially about, you know, mental, get, get your mind right. Some mental health stuff because runners are crazy. And when we get injured, we go crazier. You know what I mean? Like we really go crazy. <laughs> so, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Cause you start geeking cause you can't get out there and run. Right. Yeah. They're, they're, uh, yeah. I mean, I was that's injured. That's one way of putting it. <laughs> Painful. Painful <laughs> to do what you love. So, and then we just hurt ourselves because we think we're professional athletes and we're not. And even professional athletes get hurt, but we think we can go out and do the same thing, which we can't. So, there's a lot of uh, work that needs to be done on that way, where like you know, get your mind right and 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 uh, you know, and and and, and your physical. You know, it. I want to run marathons when I'm 80, so I can't really hurt myself. I don't run five days a week because I feel like that would, you know, too much wear and tear. I only run one to three. Concrete? Oh my word! Yeah, 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 yeah. But hey, there, there doesn't uh, New York still have their? Was it 90 and up and 100 and up marathons? Um, what do you mean? 90 and but up. for 90 year olds and 100 year olds and up. I don't know. I, I haven't. I haven't hung out with those crews yet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, you, they, you might want to bring them on. They might teach us. I know they have. Um, I know they just showed the ninety-year-old and up marathon. Because I'm like, whew, wow. whew, God bless you. Uh, that was. I just saw that about two, three years ago. So I'm pretty sure it's still going. Oh, wow. I mean, Not and they, yeah, they look good. Check into it. Check into it. But tell us this. Um, for, is, I know you, you mentioned Nike early on. And, um, so is there, how, cause this stuff that you're talking about, reaching out and, and communication and all that, some of these things cost. Where are you getting your funding from? Well, Nike supports, uh, supports our movement, right? And then, um, so like Nike, you know, I've been working with Nike since 2004. Um, and they, they actually came up with some of the culture ideas about like, okay, let's, let's run through the neighborhood and let's, let's make the, let's bring back the smell of the bakery in Little Italy. Wow. And let's, oh, yeah. So, you know, oh, yeah. So that was kind of, that was my friend Gerardo Carucci who, who, um, was really passionate about, you know, culture and, you know, he was a, he was a, he was a soccer guy, a football guy. And, uh, and then when he, he started doing running and he met me and he was like, let's do this, let's do that, let's learn, let's teach. So that was kind of, that came from, I like, I did it organically, right? Because when we used to bike together, the bridge rollers, it was like, okay, yo, there's a taco spot in the back of this record store on Bedford Street. <laughs> so we'll meet at the frozen margarita spot on Ludlow. And it was really about like, Oh, and then, you know, there's this graffiti thing. What, 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 run, what, 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 biking, it's easier because it's, you know, you don't, running, it's harder. You don't, you can only eat and run if you're running like a 50K or 50 miles or 100 miles. You're not gonna, don't generally eat during a marathon. Right, um, right. But with biking, it was always about food and exploring and learning. And there was always somebody else that was mm. like, oh, check this out. You know what I mean? So it's, it's really about the, uh, the exploration for us and um and nike saw that that was cool and they supported us and now they support uh four or five other run crews in the bronx and brooklyn and you know you know fast people slow people beginning people and then you know I, other uh companies saw what was going on and and under armor got involved and they wow there's and a a crew in DC, um, and then the district collective. And then there's, then, um, you know, Adidas was involved and they support other run crews, girls run NYC and, you know, Hoka is out now and on. And, you know, there's the, you know, cliff bar and, 
you know, more in different products. So we, we get, we get corporate support. Um, not to the fullest like we should, but that's because we're still kind of keeping this thing to ourselves gotcha. uh, in a way that we're not like, you know, we're not doing it for everybody. We're doing it for the non running runners. Um, and you know, friends and fam, and it's about recruiting and getting new people, but we're not fully blown. Um, we could be, maybe we should be. I feel like, you know, we start doing races with 10,000 people, even if it's only a thousand of us, the cool runners, the other 9,000 people get to experience what we do. Right. right. So, so, um, yeah, it's really about still growing and, um, and, and, you know, I think what we do, I, I say is bigger than brands. So even though Nike was the first company to kind of support the movement in 2004, uh, that helps other run kind of like Wu Tang when they went on different record labels. Right. Now all the other running companies are like, Oh, we, we want to do this. We want to help. And, you know, I'm cool work with Nike because I was already a Nike head. So it's easy for me. Um, but other groups are coming on and we, and we unite with those other groups and we run together. We do uh, run for Chinatown where we get that, the Asian community together and, and support local businesses and, and learn about the history of New York and, you know, different, different, uh, you know, different groups. We all kind of, you know, it's like hip hop came from gangs and the gangs became crews and the crews would battle each other. Right. right. So gangs could beat each other up. Crews would battle each other. Right. And graffiti crews came along, which, you know, there was beef, you know, you might get robbed. <laughs> that, right. The bad, bad things happen with graffiti, but yeah. the graffiti crew, not the graffiti gang became something where like, Oh, well, I know those guys and they put me down in their crew. So now, you know, when I'm uptown, I'm going to throw up CAC. When I'm in Brooklyn, I'm going to put up BYI. And when I'm in, you know, Tribeca, I'm going to put up AOK because this is where those crews live. And right. unlike the gangs where it's like, if you're wearing your, your cut sleeves, your vest, we're going to rob your jacker from you and hang it on the, on the, you know, fire escape with the other gang jackets of people that try to walk through right, our turf. Right. And we take them take their jackets off. So now it's like you want as many shirts from as many dry fit run shirts from different crews that that you can collect. <laughs> right? Because yeah. You want, you know, like, oh yeah, I'm down with the, the crew in Amsterdam and oh, how do I get that shirt? And how do I get this? And how do I you know, like so it's kinda like you you want to promote as many different, you know, groups, crews as possible. So it's kind of cool. Right. It's like, you know, it's not, and it's not even really a competition, right? Like there's some people like Enbro from Copenhagen where it's like everybody in the crew, including women are like sub three marathons to they're like just super fast, something oh, in the wait. water, really crazy. Um, but we're not trying to compete with them. You know what I mean? They're, you know, so they're like, but you maybe compete with them drinking, maybe. You know, they can't smoke as much. <laughs> they can't smoke weed like me. They might drink more and they might be faster. But anywho, like, it's it's really about, you know, using these crews that are good at what they do for inspiration. So it's kind of like, um, I don't know. I feel like it's always growing. Like, it's, you know, we get worried, like, you know, not the same. Look, it's been 19 years. It's not the same people that were running on frozen margaritas with me, they're not around now. And I'm sure they regret it because I'm, you know, running from time. I'm staying healthy. I'm, I'm doing cool things and they could have been and should have been. They yeah. But think be- about it. You had 19 years ago, you have people that weren't even born that are going to be joining you probably for your 20, right. For the 20th yeah. anniversary. I mean, that, that, that's an ongoing, you know, that's like Joe's pizza on 11th and 6th closing down go well you know i think we've uh served all the people no i mean i know they're closed Ray, now but look at how Ray, long Ray, they were there it's Ray, Ray, not just pizza Ray's pizza race i'm sorry you're right you're right you're right you're right right and, and i should know that because i went to 41 but yeah Ray's pizza yeah. um that yeah. I, I i hate to hear that it was gone but you know 
It's uh, I, I think you have a long too, ways to go. Too much cheese on the slices, anyways. It's probably a good hey, thing. hey. <laughs> I, look, I appreciate it. A it dollar, a dollar got me a slice, a drink, and an icy. Stop playing. <laughs> right, that, that was actually a uh, fork and knife pizza at Ray's. That was a lot, a lot of cheese. But yeah, it's funny because yeah, the original Ray's pizza, which was known as Ray's, was on Prince Street, and they just closed down. But it was the only one that just said Ray's. And then all the other ones said famous Ray's, original Ray's. But right. the Ray's that we grew up with downtown was next to PS41. Like, that was our that's Ray's. It. That was our Plimpies. That was like, that's yeah. what we, that was like the downtown state. Oh, wow, yeah. Plimpies. No, we won't go there. Okay, we got to wrap this up because, you know, I, I'll sit. I haven't been, honestly, I haven't been back to New York um since um our son graduated college up there in 2011 so wow. since we're since we're dating the episode you know um yeah 11 years and it's um but from i but my mom is like my connection <laughs> we talk on the phone every week and, and and even she was saying that it's not the original you know mom and pop shops and you know it's like the franchises are moving in and Oh, I well, hey, I might as well stay here in Atlanta, you know, but it's, uh, that's all right. So but now tell there us. There's problems with, with that. Like, that's part of what about, like, I do these True Yorker interviews, um, where I interview people that grew up in New York, you know, what, what hospital were you born in, what nursery school, you know, this and that. And, you know, we ask the question, like, what do you miss and stuff like that. But, but I think, uh, one of the, one of the things, the consensus on most of everybody is they miss, like, the butcher, the baker, the this. Yes, like, so, yes. So I just heard Balducci's is closed. Like, How do you close yeah. Balducci's? Yeah, that turned into like a Cinderella a few years ago. But yes, exactly. Like so, a lot of those, like Zito's Bakery, we talk about. Where oh we man. The, you know, so those things are are gone. Um, so that's sad. But then, you know, what we do is we find new spots and try to keep them open and we find old spots like i still go to the corner bistro and the bon bonnier my favorite greasy spoon on on 8th avenue and 12th and jane the old hood oh and wow I, support them as I can because if they're still there after all these years yes you know, faro closed down that was my favorite spot on you know my my my, my parents went, went there my dad went there on on uh on horatio street el faro so things like that and like mm. when my run come to new york I take them to Peter Luger's. I take them to Alfaro. I take them to all these spots. They're like, this is it. This is old school. This is, you know. Right, right. So I'll try to preserve that, but we, we do lose it on the daily. It's, it's very sad how some of the old establishments. Uh, St. Yeah, Vincent's, <laughs> where I had my son in 89. You know, right. uh, gone. I mean, a, a whole hospital? A whole hospital gone. Gone. Greenwich the Palace, House, I think they took it to a, yeah. I think they changed. St. Vincent's became a, a new hospital part of it. The other building is gone where, where Jerry Dean used to stay when we used to visit him there. But uh, that one building is gone. But yeah, I mean, things are, you know, hopefully things are changing for the better. I mean, I've never had a dollar slice of pizza since the 80s. <laughs> I don't think you ever but, will. I mean, they want what started at $4? Yeah, well, I, I'm down with it. I don't support the, the 99 cent slices. I can't. I can't. There's too no, much good no. food in New York for me to, you know, to, 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 to slack and just, you know, eat, you know, like my, my thing now, which, which is funny is because like, I'm not really a consumer. Like all my clothing is from Nike or, you know, the, you know, my hats are 20 years old and, and stuff like that. So to be a part of, of society, to be like, to, to, to contribute, what I do is I buy these freaking used to be six dollar coffees. Now I think they're like eight dollar coffees because I live leave a tip. But that's my contribution, right? Like I'm I buy this six dollar oat mocha, and you know, and that money goes <laughs> in the neighborhood. I do that every day, and that because I'm not buying sneakers and I'm not buying jewelry and I'm not buying anything. Right. But I'm like, what? Well, you're not the, you're not supporting the Lancy? Stop. Delancey. I'm on Delancey every day. I'm actually on Delancey Street right now, to tell you the truth. I got the, oh, really? The I got the Williamsburg Bridge right, right, right outside of that window. 
is the bridge. So, oh, that's yeah. all the traffic that we're hearing. I, I know I'm. Yeah, hearing, yeah. I don't know if the listeners are hearing, but okay, okay. But that, but that's good. That's that great authentic, you know, New York because you know I, I grew up uh, not far from Chelsea, uh, from the Hudson River, and um, so you know the boats coming by and and we were not far from the West Side Highway. So it was, you know, that cool, you know, because you, know, you don't have central AC, so you open your windows and it's that that breeze and that sound and with no building, we we're on the top floor, so no building blocking. You hear all that, and it's, it's so I'm listening. I'm just like nostalgia, just yeah. yeah I was just those days. Um. So wait, you haven't even seen the High Line? No, I, I heard about it, but I, I'm, you're talking about along the Chelsea. Yeah, the the the, uh, the what we used to call the bridge, but the uh, yeah the train tracks that became no. like the river. Yeah, you haven't seen. You got to come back to New York. There's a lot going on here. I, well, like, I told around. my mom. I told my mom yesterday, and I might have stuck my foot in my mouth um, that I'm going to try to get up there this summer, this coming summer, 2023. And um, so now that I've said it, I think I have to. You know, I hate to have her all excited sitting in the you know in the seat of expectation, and I'm like, well, you know. But you know, one thing is, ah, I don't fly. I don't like to fly. I don't. It's just too much aggravation. I don't. I don't have a problem with flight. I just don't like flying, especially if I can drive. So I think we right. might just be hitting that seventy-five to you know I eighty-one and get up there that way. Um, my brother and sister-in-law, shout out to Peter Paul and uh, Deneen Scott. They're like, you know, <laughs> road runners now. They're back and forth and for a, for a while because they have clients here in Atlanta. And for a while, they were down here like almost every month. And I'm like, I haven't seen you guys this much in the 27 years I've been gone. <laughs> you know? So, but yeah, I think it's uh, time for me to, re- you know, return the favor well, just, and head just on up. In our neighborhood, we have this thing called the little, the little island and and the high line, just for you to walk around. You know, just even if you stay in a one mile radius of our old hood, you're gonna bug out. Like, there's a lot of new stuff over there, and and a, and a lot of it is for the better. I can't. You know, gentrification isn't all bad, right. uh, especially in, in communities where there was food deserts. It's right. bad that it prices a lot of people out, um, but yeah. it, it also brings better schools and better things. So it's kind of like it's you know it's a mixed bag. I think over gentrification is bad, but the right amount of 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 youth a good and, mix, yeah, a good mix, which is which is hard. Um, you know, like when somebody's gonna goes, be mad. <laughs> That's all it boils down to. When, when COVID happened and and the and the moving trucks were on the corners and people were leaving, you know, most mm. of us were happy. Get out of here, beat it, good riddance. You know, people were drive renting trucks, collecting furniture from everybody that left New York. There were you know stuff, nice furniture on the corner. So I wasn't mad at that. But New York is is actually popping. <laughs> it's, 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 it's I hope they were clean. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was a, there was, there were, the, the streets were crazy. During COVID, it was crazy. Like, it was the ghost town, like, which, you know, I, you know, listen, uh, Thanksgiving was a ghost town. I appreciate it. You know, Labor Day. So, like, I like when the, when the city is dead. Um, but business is great. You know, there's people are out in the streets. Like, Delancey is popping. Like, there's mad bars in the Lower East Side, Avenue C, Avenue D, crazy places where you couldn't have walked. 20, 30 years ago. God, and, uh, man. And yeah, and yeah. Stuff like that. So that's a, that's a good thing. Though. I think yeah. like people try to act like streets aren't safe. And there's a no. Nobody's getting robbed for their sneakers anymore. Nobody's pulling out your bamboo earrings from your ear. Nobody's, you know, chain snatching and, you know. T- <laughs> so, I mean, there is crime, but you can't compare it to our day when you saw people and you had to walk on the other side of the street. You but know, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me pause you there because I just, I literally just heard it. I'm, I don't watch news, so trust me, I'm, I'm, I'm not like, oh, but the news says, no, no. But this report did like throw me back. Like, what? This lady is on, is on the platform waiting for a train. I don't know which train, but she's on the platform waiting for a train. Not only did she get robbed for her purse, she got robbed for her shoes. I was like, yo, what in the world? What happened? What happened? And then the, uh Eric, I always forget his last name, your new Eric. mayor. Uh yeah. you know, he's he was he was sharing the stats, but apparently I, I didn't know it's like the highest crime rate in like sixteen years. And he said, But hey, gun violence is down, you know, uh uh felony assaults are down and blah 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 blah. And I'm like, 
it, it's just up and down, up and down. But yeah, you're right. Nobody's getting, um, I know one, right before I left there, I got a uh, gun stuck in my face, uh, trying to rob me. Really? On my block? Are you, you're kidding me, right? <laughs> that, that didn't happen. But, um. But the sad thing is there's a lot of, there's a lot of mental illness in the streets. Yes. Um, it's a lot, like, well, the city's not really taking care of that for, for, for different reasons, but a lot of the crazy people in the street aren't violent, and you know, and a, a, but but a handful are, and they, you know, they kind of ruin it for for most people. Um, but yeah, I mean, the city has always been dangerous, but it's a lot of fun, and I guess there was always a mix of danger and fun, and and it and, it, and right. it's not safe. You can't walk around and and think it's sweet. You know what I mean? Like people are snatching you know they'll snatch your phone from you they you know it might not be as many purse snatchings and stuff like that but there's listen there's hungry people out there there's you know the, the you yeah know, the school yeah break. like you know there there's a reason why there's crime and and it's you know uh, uh it's and it probably goes back to education and uh and stuff like that how the how the system is set up but in general new york is the shit. so like those I, things I, like York and yeah, enjoy. yeah. I, I'm a New Yorker to heart, still and all. Um, I walk two and a half to three miles every day, seven days a week. Um, but I will say this: I've been in uh, Atlanta since '93, just celebrated 29 years here, and uh, so I'm pre-Olympics along with a lot. Now I came down here from Virginia. I, I skipped New York, New Jersey, Virginia, Atlanta, um, and but a lot of New Yorkers. I mean, there were people coming from New York don't have licenses. You know, opening, you know how we do in New York. We, we create things. We <laughs> say, oh, y'all don't have one of those? Oh, okay, let me start one. I mean, the most creative ideas, like, oh, I'm back. And now, uh, with a, when you have a million people, not just from New York, but from all over, a million people each year moving into an area, for one, yes, we are very over, overpopulated. Uh, yes, we are very expensive. Um, but you, we do have, um, areas that resemble New York to where if I wanted to go into a city, like a New York City environment, atmosphere, vibe, culture, get head down to Atlanta. Now, I don't. I'm in the suburbs for a reason. Been here since I got mm. here. Um, but, yeah, if you haven't been to Atlanta, you need to come visit us. Um, I mean, when Peter comes down here, he brings some clients, and, you know, he's telling them about the, the uh, you know, the potential for their products and stuff down here. And they're like, oh, well, let me, you know, tag along with you. And now they're like, yo, uh, what's it going to take? You know, what's the housing cost? <laughs> Everybody wants to move. But look, I, I came to visit my family May of 93. I moved down November 93. So I know it's one of those, you know, you come, you love it. And you, you can't, yeah, we have franchises, IHOP and, you know, Red Lobster and Olive Garden, that kind of stuff. But you can find those Greek restaurants to get a good falafel. You see what I'm saying? You yeah. can find an Orange Julius, you know, which is a franchise now anyway. But um, all that to say, w when I talked to my mom about what New York is now missing and losing, and I look at what Atlanta is gaining, it's like, mm, why would why would I make that a 900 mile trip and I can go right down here 20 minutes away and get it for the same price, you know? Oh, okay, my family's up there, so I said, okay, I'll I'll I'll, I'll uh, you know, yeah, I'll come. You, you need some concrete in your life. Come 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 back and. and ah. <laughs> Um, okay. We're, we're going to wrap this up. Cause like I said, I know I'll talk to you forever. It's been forever since we talked and we're not going to get everything, especially not catching up in an hour. So now top it off with how can people find you and everything that you have going on, your contact information, uh, website, websites, email address, phone number, well, it's mostly, whatever you have. Uh, it's mostly, uh, Instagram. That's how you follow us. That's a kind of the we kind of in between sites. We're working on this new Web three thing and trying to get people together in, in one place. Um, but it's uh, Bridge Runners on NYC on uh, Instagram. Where I think you can put an NYC Bridge Runners, and it's also uh, True Yorkers on Instagram, but also True Yorkers dot NYC. So I remember my my boy Dagan, the dancer. Remember Dagan? That's my partner with you. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. So 
those two things are there. You know, there's a couple of websites, but mostly Instagram to keep people like up on it. But we, you know, hopefully, uh, with the with the whole anniversary and big things, we'll we'll have some bigger places for people to meet and chat and listen. Um, you know, and, and have like cool talks. There's a lot of much cooler, healthier people in my movement than myself that we should all listen to. Um, and so I'm trying to kind of create that, that space. So that'll be happening soon, but definitely NYC bridge runners and true Yorkers on Instagram. My personal is Mike says S A E S not that cool though. Just a couple of graffiti photos on there. <laughs> uh, bragging about hey, my kids or something, but I, cool. can't, I can't count how many times I've sat down on a train seat with either Sace or my brother kid fresh tagged on. <laughs> and I'm like, Okay, keep you know, keep keep the city uh, you know, carrying us from one borough to the other with these names and seats and yeah, yeah. And yeah. then they mess you up and they put those trains <laughs> where the graffiti where the what was it, the um the graffiti wouldn't stay on there like disappear. Yeah, graffiti <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Eventually well, the hey. trains are gonna spray us back. But uh yeah, we're we're you know, graffiti now yeah. like you know, it's it's funny because when you when you look at our country, uh, we have a couple of things, jazz yes. and, uh, and graffiti. Um, you know, yeah. even though graffiti kind of started in Philadelphia, it kind of got its, 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 you know, it's, it's mainstay in New York and now it's all around the world and it's now it's commercial art and it's, you know, the right, lobby right. of the, of the freedom tower is done by, uh, a graffiti artist from, 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 from Miami. You know, my boy Jose Parla Ease. So, like, now, like, everybody remembered how they were talking about hip-hop and talking about graffiti. Yeah, and, yeah. And now you look at, you know, the NFL and every commercial. It's, you know, it's all that they, 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 they've they they've taken part in what came from the from the streets. And, it, right. and it's mainstream, for, for better or worse, um, or both. But uh, but it's cool. Yeah, you can't because, go a day uh, without seeing a commercial with some kind of hip hop old old school too. They're not like making yeah. up new stuff. It's old school. It's like okay, I, hey, yeah, I remember. You know, Bobby had like oh, whoa, 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 oh yeah, okay. So that's yeah. that's cool. I'm happy about that. And this is this is our lifetime, right? We we were there, you know, from from beepers to uh, to you know yeah. to, to 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 Skype. We're we're here. <laughs> we, we made it. We, we made, made it. it. Hey, but hey, I'm I'm only half. I don't know about you, but I'm only halfway there. And um, we, because we got a lot of things going on, and we're gonna connect. Though we're definitely gonna connect. I'm gonna talk to you uh, after we uh, after I hang this up. But um, I appreciate everything, everything that you're doing, everything that you shared with us, and um, I think our listeners really. This is definitely a big uh twist from what we normally talk about on here but like i said anything that is community oriented like i said it's the community nonprofit network podcast but you don't have to be a nonprofit. got my ear quotes going folks uh to to add value to us so with that folks we're getting out of here um if you'd like to advertise with us visit our website the cnnpodcast.com um if you'd like to be a future guest please jump on the website um click that be a guest tab and until next time fam as always be awesome and be blessed